Hello, hello. I want to make a video about my pants that I made and I'm so excited about it. And here's my pants. I don't know if it comes out in light. Very good. Those are my fur coat pants. Awesome. I made those myself out of like baby blankets or like these they call them throws you can get them at Walmart for like nine or ten dollars each and I made oh I'm making a whole suit out of this I made the pants they're finished and I'm still working on the sweater and the sweater is gonna be like closed all the way up to here and I'm going to also add a turtleneck collar on it which is gonna be sitting loose it's not tight so it's gonna be made out of the same material it's this fake leopard fur fake leopard fur and it is very 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 soft and it's amazing and I what I do is I use, actually I have to use four of those throws. They're like, um, I would say they're like five feet by three or four feet, something like this. It's not very big, but it's just the right size for pants and a jacket or sweater. So I have already made all together I've already made four of those pants and um, I made the yellow sweater I showed that in another video and I made a couple of other sweaters that were like test sweaters in the past that was trial and error I was experimenting it was different materials and different cuts and um, some of them got too tight and I had to tear them back out and redo it or some of them I had to throw away but it's worth it to, t to experiment with these kind of things. I never learned how to cut any fabrics and in the right professional way or learn how to sew it and um, how to work with this you know as a fashion designer. I never learned this but I have been experimenting with this on my own for many, many years. I would say I started when I was 18 or 19 and uh, always enjoyed experimenting. Back then I was using my mother's sewing machine. Today I only work with my hands and a needle. And it's like meditation. It's a, I call it the sewing meditation. <laughs> it's really great because it takes you know you take about three hours per day to to work with your hands like this with these very very soft fabrics very easy to poke the needle through it um, it's not hard at all it's not like working with cotton so I, I don't think I, I'll ever be working with cotton because for that you need a sewing machine and one time I sewed right through one of my fingers. I think it was this finger <laughs> that, I, that I sewed right through, right through the nail. Oh, that was painful. Oh. And so, yeah, I, I knew quite soon that power tools is not exactly for me. So I'm afraid of power tools, any kind of power tools for the garden, like Edward Scissorhand. I trim my hedges by hand with just manual cutters and I enjoy that more because it is, it's, I think it's easier. You can always step back and see what you're doing and if it's even and when you have a an electric chainsaw type of thing then it just goes way too fast and it's also way too dangerous because one wrong move with that and it can cut your hand off or somebody it can cut into someone else you know so yeah you don't want to do that it, it can destroy things 
in your garden and so it's not good so always I always recommend do everything manual and take your time for it we should take our time doing things it's better life is better that way life used to be much better because people had no choice in the past other than to use manual things like hedge clippers <laughs> you know these English gardens they were manicured perfectly just by many people using simple hedge clippers and they look so beautiful and they did such amazing work and people who do these who use these uh, hedge saws electric hedge saws they just it's just too fast and it's just too it's not an art anymore in that way so it's not it's not good anyway back to the pants the pants are better than fur because they are made out of a synthetic very 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 soft material that's softer than fur and um, it is it has a little bit of a leopard pattern in it and it's pink and you can choose the colors you want and um, it is cruelty free and it's vegan and it's it's ethical and it feels good and it's absolutely warm and wonderful and what I do is I use um, the upper layer is my desired pattern that I want to show on the outside which is the pink leopard pattern and um, uh, and the other blanket underneath is maybe a cheaper one you can sometimes buy them for like three dollars each in the Christmas sale at Walmart that's what I usually do I always stock up on a few of those and so I use that for the inside and have the really soft soft surface on the inside also it has two sides each blanket so it has one that is um, that's supposed to show on the outside and one that is um, the underside so uh, which is very soft of course too but um, I prefer these the, the very wonderful like fur like character of the outside layer and so I so I lay them together so I put the I put I put the sail blanket underneath and the desired pattern on the top and then I, I I have a template for it that I made myself so what you do is you take your favorite pants or your favorite sweater and you just lay it out onto the fabric and with this material you don't even need needles to stack that together because it kind of sticks to each other it kind of it kind of clings into each other the the surface of it so you just lay it out on a on a flat table and make sure you flatten that very well and that there's no crinkles underneath that both sheets are that both blankets are very flat on the table and are pressed flat towards each other and then you take the template um, cut you can and I recommend to use the template to make a template cut out of your favorite clothings and uh, cuts yeah for example you know your favorite pants with whatever you know bell bottom for example and you can't buy right now I haven't seen bell bottom pajama pants yet so that's why I use my I use my own cut from the pants I don't even have the pants anymore but I I still have the template of that because I've been using this now for many many years and um, so I recommend to make a for you can you don't have to use the template but I recommend to um, so you how you start is you first put this the pants on the flattened blankets and you flatten the pants and you you know how the cut is followed yeah with the pants it's a little bit difficult because you have to make sure that the entire like one side of the pants is really showing its contours on the blankets 
and then you just cut that with the scissors carefully out the way the pants are cut and make sure that that the the top part is cut the right way because it has to have a little bit extra extra space in where the pants were, were all four sides of the pants are being sewn together because um, it has to have enough space for movement and so for pants that's very important the space for movement more important than when you are working with sleeves so for sleeves I don't do this I just do regular uh, sleeve cut where I just add the arm to the torso so but for the pants it has to have plenty of space of moving space extra material so you can move without tearing the seams out which all happened in the past because I had a baby blanket that was just too small and I had to then later on add some material to give it the extra leg space so that's the pants I can't I could never wear outside I ha always have to wear a sweater over it because it's it has all these patches on it but um, but my pants have become more and more professional in time and so this one here is my best specimen yet and they are going to become better still and I made a fantastic template then out of the cut fabric that I just so you you cut the you cut the fabric then you take the pants away then you and then you lay the 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 newly cut fabric onto a template fabric that you will keep only for templates for the future so for example I used a very cheap Walmart blanket that is actually comes from a very large blanket that like a bed cover or something and it's made out of just like a compressed synthetic material it feels like felt material and one side has a, a funky pattern on it it was cheap it was on sale I thought that uh, was serving a purpose in our other house so um, and then I had I ended up cutting it and making things and make made some pillowcases with it and stuff to protect pillows like um, couch pillows and stuff like this and so then I had rests of that material that had one side a pattern on it on the other side was blank like white or gray or something so and that's very practical to have that for the template material because you you want to have you want to know which side is which so for example the the i lay out the i lay out the blank side on the table then i put my newly cut pants material on top so and then i have the and then i i flatten it and then it doesn't need to be stuck together because it sticks to each other and then you can cut that as well again the template material right after that newly cut fabric that you just cut and then you have a template for the future so this is very good and you on four pants you only need one side one of the four sides because and then particularly with the the two sides of that template material you can you know which side you have just used so you can what you do is you use two of the same s side like two of the blank sides you cut fabric out and then you turn it around and and you cut two of the pattern sides because then you have all four sides for the pants that works the best so it's kind of hard to explain that with words it's probably better if I showed that how I actually do it on my sewing table so maybe I'll do that sometime in the future but if you have questions I will certainly answer all questions on how to do it and it's kind of straightforward it's it's not difficult at all just make sure that the pattern that you want to have on the outside is um, is on the right side so but when you do the 
when you cut cut it, you first you have don't have to pay attention. Just pay attention that you have have you use the template for the same side fabric. Use the template two times for the, on the same side and then two times on the other side. That's that's just um, that's what's important. And then later on, you have to pay attention to how you sew these sides together. It, you have to make sure that the side that shows on the outside is stuck together on the inside. That two two side two leg parts will be stuck together where the, the desired pattern is on the inside, so that when you're sewing it, that the seam will not show. The seam will be basically then on the inside instead of on the side that you're showing. That's kind of difficult <laughs> to explain, I guess. So, like for example, here you see you see the seam and the reason why it is kind of like tucked in is because I have put these two sides like this together. They were folded together and when you do this then you can sew the inside this like this together and so the, sh the seam on the inside will show more therefore than on the outside okay, it's very important to have the outside part like stuck against one another and then be sewing on the inside and then fold and then when it once it's done you just turn it over and you have a wonderful sweater or pants so it's really nice, really wonderful. Yeah, and then for the for the top part, this part here, you, once you sewed it together, you have to fold this over, and then give I give it this much space to fold it over towards the inside, and then sew that together. Sew this, sew this upper part, the belt part, together on the inside, like this, all the way around, and then you can put a rubber band into the the top part as the belt part uh, like a really I recommend really wide rubber bands like this wide they are made for like uh, sweatpants or something like this and really comfortable nice rubber bands and make it not make it too tight and just pull that through this upper part and and then once it's once it's meet meets the other end again, then you can sew the ends together, or um, maybe I don't know. Maybe there's other ways where you can put a buckle or something like this on it. But I sew it together; it's easier that way. And um, it um, it's quite flexible, you know. Even if you gain or lose some pounds. It's if it's made nice nice and loose enough, you know, it doesn't fall down. So it's really, my first pants, they used to slip down when I would bend or pick something up from the floor, it would just <laughs> slip down because I had, I had it too low. It was like, like hip hugger type of style and I would kind of slip down, particularly when, when you're fat, that happens. So, but um, I made this, the top part a little bit longer and to give it a little extra space for uh, for non-slip and um, for staying in its place and it works really really well so yeah so this is my recommendation for pants and there was something else I wanted to say and that I woke up today with and that is that every person needs to empower themselves. This is my old motto. I, I can't say it often enough. People need to empower themselves. They need to, they need to forget about all the stuff that they have been indoctrinated with, that they have been told by their parents in fairy tale books from day one, you know, forget about this, a lot of these fairy tale books that my parents read to me when I was little, uh, they have a lot of bullshit <laughs> messages in it, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> 
you know, this is total bull. You know, a little girl, when she hears the story of Cinderella, she will, she will, she will grow up thinking, well, my day will come naturally, Cinderella, it all comes by itself. And then if it doesn't come, then, oh boy, then I'm getting really pissed. Where's the Cinderella part happening now? It's not happening. Nobody even likes me. Um, what am I going to do now? Hmm, you know? And <laughs> so all of these fairy tales, it's like they're not telling, talking about reality enough, you know? It's good to have dreams and, and fairy tales are kind of magical. They, uh, they make us dream and daydream and, and wish and all of this. But it is not reality when the message is you have to do nothing for it. You can just lay back and um, binge on whatever donuts and think that the fairy tale will become true. <laughs> yeah, maybe in a travel trailer, somewhere in a trailer park, baby with a drunk guy that is has a fat beer belly and eats meat and has tattoos okay yeah maybe maybe if you're okay with that you know i personally i'd rather be a spinster and live alone but i'm never alone i have an animal so my my animal is my companion uh, but i also have a husband as a companion and uh, that's good. I wish I had better conversations sometimes. But, you know, we have to be... We have to be more realistic with our wishes and how to come to those wishes. You know, I think that a lot of the things Esther Hicks says is very true, but it's like in the fairy tale books, it is, it's not realistic if we lean back and do eat anything we want to and then think that things will just fold in its place by themselves with us uh, doing things that are not good for us. So um, we have to do things that are good for us in order to empower ourselves. And once we empower ourselves, then these wishes that each person has, woman or man, will come true. You know? And I see there are, so, there are so many people, particularly those who have been very damaged during childhood and who may have uh, genetic, in gen genetic problems or uh, problems that occurred in the brain during during the gestational time and all of this is absolutely horrific and I am definitely not judging anybody on this. Um, judgment is in in the way of looking down on somebody is complete. We can throw that out, out of the window. We don't need that anymore. Throw that in the trash can and never use that again. Because judgment in a way of discriminating against somebody uh, in an emotional way is just not useful for us or for anybody because everybody the way they are is the way they the way they are put into this world you know and the way they have been treated and their genetics and the the upbringing and the the mechanisms, the biological mechanisms that are happening in that organism according to the environment. There's a lot going on with these so-called transposons and more than we can ever possibly imagine. Science is now doing a lot of research on the transposons, on finding out how the environment actually shapes our physical anatomy and particularly how our our brain functions. This is, this is very, very delicate, actually. So it is absolute, that's why it is so absolutely critical 
that everybody stops right there in their tracks when they are doing something negative to themselves and this is not new age this is not even this is not even far eastern religion or any of this although that ties in eventually but what i'm talking about right now is just plain pure common sense if for anybody let's say for example a uh, let's say a 20 year old or a teenager who lives with a dysfunctional father in a trailer trash park and the father is drinking every day and the daughter is uh, can't fulfill her dreams and her goals and she doesn't probably doesn't even know what goals or possibilities are actually out there. She doesn't get enough education. The father might even take her out of high school and say, you should work, you should help us uh, make a living or whatever, you know. And so my message to those people is, what if you are watching horror movies, which is understandable because it takes away it takes away this bleakness of your daily life. It's, it gives you a moment of thrill. And I have done it myself, so I know what I'm talking about. I know how it feels. I, I know how bleakness feels. I know how it feels to uh, feel unempowered and not know how things are going to move ahead later on and it's kind of like oh what the heck let me buy potato chips and a coke and candy and I'm gonna watch some horror movies and get a thrill and completely take my mind off my problems. The problem here is there's uh, several problems involved in this and I'm using horror movies just as a, uh, as, a, as a relatively mild example in this situation because there are act outs done by people that are much worse and I'll get to get to that in a moment. What happens is when you watch a horror movie and it, it will take your mind off and I had a fight with my best friend over this over this very subject because she likes to watch these uh, documentary films that are not any documentary films. They, they in the end it says it's just like this one thing is true, everything else is false. But it's made laid out as a documentary film, which I think is criminal because it, 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 it's typical uh, corporate agenda. It just makes people even more misled and it gives more anti-information. For example, uh, there was a documentary film about mermaids and that people have seen mermaids and then they have they ha these 3D computer models where they make these they they make them look like completely real and it was a very nice film very artistic i thought it was really cool but then they don't stop there then the next documentary film is about zombies people having seen zombies and da 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 and all of this and then they come up with this with these uh, testimonials and make it look just like a documentary film and it isn't in the end it will have the fine print on on YouTube that's a good part on YouTube you can slow that down and you can read the fine print which you can't when you're watching TV it just goes by way too fast way faster than any th than the average person can read and so most people think oh yeah this might be true maybe yeah you know, and then they get really freaked out. And then if maybe a film about ETs that are coming here to poke our eyes out or something like this. So it's all of this is extreme fear, f fear creating in society. It makes it 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 is only a negative, a war message basically to the world. It is the opposite of a peace message. It's the opposite direction that we want to go. We want to go into understanding life. We want to go into, into understanding ourselves, understanding other beings. We want to understand why we need forests, for example. Nobody talks about this. You know, This is the most pressing issue there is. The forests are being logged. Nobody says anything because they're too busy watching vampire films and um, mermaid films and zombie films and thinking that's real instead of seeing what the and and it's also it's deliberate this is deliberately done to distract the public from the real issues from the real burning issues that we all are alive and we need to breathe oxygen 
and in order to breathe oxygen we have to have forests but they're cutting the forests down so this is just one of thousands and thousands of examples that are happening right now on this planet high intensity active sonar by the military is another issue it's it's the worst issue there is because it is destroying the lungs and the eardrums of the whales they die a gruesome death they bleed to death internally and the pain excruciating pain that they experience and it depends on how close they get to this sound range if they get real close they can they can die within an hour which is absolutely horrendous if they get get uh, in the periphery they can lose their hearing they can't find their food anymore they can't find their 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 family because they communicate through sound and or anywhere in between this range they um, they can die a slow death and end up stranding themselves. Then when, when whales strand themselves, they collapse. Their organs collapse because their bodies are not designed to be on land anymore. Their bodies are huge. They have, um, it is designed to float in the water, not to be lying on a hard surface with gravity like we have on Earth on an earth's surface. They're not designed for this, so when they beach themselves, uh, it doesn't take very long until all the organs collapse and the animal dies, but in an absolutely horrific way. It's not being talked about, even though the mermaid film mentioned the high intensity active sonar explosions, where they, and that was the only thing in that film that was actually real. and. But it, but it was washed over, this, these facts, and what it does to the animals, with the thrill of mermaids possibly being there. So people don't even pay attention to what the real problem here is. The real problem is not that there are mermaids. There are no mermaids. Okay, the whole thing it doesn't even make any sense from a scientific point of view. Anybody who's studied biology and uh, even privately read some things about it will know that the the way they depicted those mermaids, as artistic as they were designed, this is not how evolution works. They don't have an upper body like a person with hair. Hair is a hindrance when they swim. So a mermaid would be a, a sea lion that's or, or a, a manatee or or a, a harbor seal. That's that that's how a mer the mer real mermaids look, you know. Those are mermaids <laughs> if you want, you know. And uh, but people have always had fantasies about all kinds of things and creating all kinds of monsters and they thought it's exciting. It's been going on for many, many hundred years. But, um, and the devil is another one of those mental images that people came up with. It doesn't exist. So anyway, uh, I can, I already wrote something in my book about that. If anybody wants to read something about the devil, I'll send it to you because this is very interesting information and um, everybody should know, you know, where, where this belief about the devil actually originates and it, it was designed to create to, to create fear and to make people so subordinate that's the only reason and it's still used in that way by religions particularly by the Christian religion which is absolutely an absolute um, anti it goes completely against the flow of life and where the direction we want to head to, direction of love, peace, and well-being. And um, so that's why I, I, I recommend, highly recommend to everybody, meditate, think about things, think things through. When somebody tells you something, doesn't matter who that is, question what they say, you know, question everything they say and read, read a lot of information. Read, particularly read 
scientific books. This is very important. Make sure you, you get as much information as you can get about planet Earth and if you want to about the Moon and the Mars and the other planets and the entire solar system and the entire eternal universe. But make sure you learn about biology, make sure you learn about all this important stuff that concerns us, that is so important for our life, for our, for our, all of our well-being, the animals and the people and, and the plants that we depend on because we're living in a symbiosis with the plants. The plants breathe in carbon dioxide that we're breathing out and they breathe out oxygen that we are breathing in. It's a life cycle. Read the books by Rudolf Steiner. It is, he's done remarkable work. He is, I would say, in terms of agriculture, he is the number one expert on doing a natural life cycle agriculture and, and sustainable living on planet Earth. It is absolutely important what he has to say about it. And um, so in regards to, I use this example, a teenage girl growing up in a terribly unfortunate environment, I'm telling every single person, and, and in particular this, that's what I also wanted to talk about, I thought about this last night before I went to bed, is this continuous bullying. And um, you see that the shootings are happening more and more rapidly and um, so people thought it was like 2012 was the end or something. It, another myth that, that we should not listen to. What's happening, what's real is that because of overpopulation and industrialization and pollution and more and more people are getting uncomfortable, they're getting toxic, they're getting toxicity in their brains, they're getting um, angry, more and more people are crowded together, that always causes anger, and um, so it eventually, and then it causes what the absolute worst thing is, the teenagers, you know, that know very little about their own brain, their own psychology, their own bodies, is, and I don't blame them like this again, I said we have to forget about the emotional judgment, but the situation is this, a lot of teenagers are getting angry and they let it out on others. And so what happens is to those people who are bullied, and I was bullied, so I know exactly how that feels. When you're being bullied as a teenager, it, which is probably, the, uh, it's the most, critical time while you're growing up, it's, uh, it's when the, the neocortex starts to function, it's when the body becomes mature, and it is a very scary time in somebody's life and brings up a lot of insecurities. And in particular, in relation, this relation, me in relation to others, how am I seen? How, how do others view me? You know, it's the self-image problem that becomes very pressing during that age. And so when, when teenagers, when they don't, when they feel unempowered, when they feel bullied, and when, when they are bullied um, really badly, when others are picking on them, what happens if they don't, if they don't let, if they don't have any kind of vent to let this, these horrific emotions out, through it will bottle up and it will at some point explode. And when that explodes is when the person snaps, takes his dad's machine gun or rifle, hunting rifle, and goes out and shoots people at public places like a restaurant or um, a shopping mall or an airport. This is what happens. So we can avoid this or people become let le or people become sadistic. Some people have a specific brain anatomy that when they are being bullied that they end up torturing 
an animal or a person or or their own child happens a lot and and there's a lot of cases where it's never being discovered by the public where it's so, uh, some people even get away with this and my plea is to all of these people to everyone whatever brain anatomy they have is become aware of what you're doing become aware of this right now don't let it out on another living being. Don't do it. Don't do it for your own sake. I'm not saying because you're going to end up with the death penalty or for with a life term prison sentence or something or being beaten up and killed by other prisoners, you know. There are prisoners who get very angry when they when they see a prisoner who has done a sadistic act. So I'm warning people about this too. But what I'm warning about most of all is your body cells do not want to harm another living being. When you hurt another living being, you're going against your own body cells. You're going against your own organism that you are made out of. Your own, all this, the, the, the separate individual parts of, of you. Those are, this, uh, those are all individual alive parts. A ha the heart is an organism by itself. It is an alive organism by itself, but it can only exist, of course, inside of your entire conglomeration of biology. It needs the other things around it. It needs the blood vessels, it needs the blood that pumps through and all of that feeds it, that feeds its walls, and so on. But a heart has already been designed in a test tube, and that's why we know I've seen a heart beat without blood. A pink heart, I, I saw it in this test tube beating. It's amazing. But it has to have the nourishing fluid going through, so they have nourishing fluid going through. But they're making those as replacement hearts now. So they can grow those in in vitro in vitro organs, in vitro meat is gonna be coming. Okay, and then we can buy that instead of you know, having someone else's heart cut out of a corpse uh, or eating eating corpses. You know. So we don't have to eat corpses that corpses anymore that once were alive individuals. So we can eat that kind of stuff, for example, salmon grown in vitro, that would be fantastic because salmon is very, very nur nurturing. So I recommend not to eat any animal except maybe salmon, but only fish in, in that, that was grown in vitro that doesn't, it's not taken out of the ocean from the other animals. So the the other animals are starving right now because of overfishing. So that's why I re recommend to people not to eat any animal. If, if possible, don't eat any animal. We can do it without it. We can live without it. But when the in vitro meat is there, we should definitely consider that and um, support that technology. It's very important. So again, the, the teenager that is in a desperate situation, whether it's a woman or a man, women and men have, girls and boys have different needs. They have different brain anatomies. Um, the critical, what they all, what the problem that's pressing for all of them is don't listen ever to what other people say about you. Don't listen to it if a bully says something about you. It does not matter. It doesn't pertain to you. It's don't even take that personally. He he just reacts to you know his own crazy needs and his own he just doesn't want to feel his own pain. That's what it is. So I'm addressing this video to every person, to the victim as well as to the perpetrator. And I think the perpetrator is actually the worst victim of all because the perpetrator does not even understand what he's doing. 
um, he is a victim of his own family, a victim of wrong uh, development in the in the universe. Is a victim of toxicity. Is a victim of social uh, problems that are thrown at him. You know, he he feels unempowered. He feels less value. So he lets it out on others. He wants to feel the power. You know, and he um, maybe also wants to have the gore effect. You know, because that's what I think. That's what sadism is. It is a it's a combination of two things. It's, it is a feeling of combination of three things. The brain anatomy that it doesn't have compassion, but it can be built up. That's what I'm trying to say. It's, it's very important. That can be built up, and we have to trust in this. But it's not being built up if people continue with their act arts. It will never be built up. It will shri shrivel even more. The more people do horrible things, the more they, desen they, the more they desensitize themselves. And video games that are cruel are a major contributor to people ending up shooting others because they have already learned that in the video games. You know, there's a video game where Christians shoot atheists. This is so unethical that even the ACLU the American Civil Liberties Union has fought that with their lawyers, have stood up against this politically, and they have, I think they have removed that video game finally. But then there's other video games that are equally bad, that are also, it's all about violence, and usually men like video games like this, because they want to feel, they have this adrenaline, they have the testosterone, they have this they, they feel this need, it's a biological thing, they, they feel this need to then act it out in this way, you know, the frustration. And it is not positive to do this for your own sake, for your own body. Some people have developed leukemia because of this. Because leukemia is an illness, it's a, it's a form of C, I don't like the, to say the word, it's a form of C that where the body actually eats itself cells that are starting to eat the red blood cells. They see them as an intruder instead of recognizing as, as their own, as part of their own system, their own good guys. So this is uh, an illness, it could not be more symbolic for an internal war that, that is caused by an outer conflict. And the outer conflict would be somebody watching violent video games, shooting, constantly shooting an enemy. And what they're doing is, is they're doing violence, even though their own body is one, just wants to love. Our cells are just made for love. They love. Again, I've s talked about this many times. They have done tests where they laid human uh, organ cells, just the, just the organ cells, let's say, from a liver, from a human liver, just plain simple cells that are multiplied in a petri dish, and laid them on top of rat body cells from an organ or whatever, r from rats. So there was a layer of rat organ cells, and they laid the human body cells on top of the red body cells, and it is amazing what happened. Both the red body cells, they didn't hurt each other at all. Instead, they loved each other. They, um, it's amazing. Instead, the <laughs> red body cells and the human body cells both grew faster when they were laid on top of each other than, than if they were growing by themselves in the Petri dish. So. And they were wondering why that is. They, the, everything the same except this time they were laid on top of each other and they grew like way, way faster and they were way healthier than when they grew by themselves. So to me, this is very clear what it says. It says that our cells want to love. 
they want to love other species they want to love all life when you see somebody when you see a child that doesn't have much cortical function like um, for example a person with trisomnia 21 down syndrome when you see those kids they will go or the Williams kids where they don't have as much complex cortical function this is where it's quite impaired or kids with total retardation for example they will well the kids that are still that still can walk and all of this let's let's take those not the ones that where they can't walk anymore but the the, the ones where they have they have enough cortical function like a dog for example they will recognize the dog immediately as a friend and the dog recognizes him as a friend it's um as as much as the dog recognizes uh, an intelligent human as a friend but the intelligent human is often is often not as quick to go up to another living being whether it's a dog or a, a human because their conditioning comes in their their memories their their reasoning you know although it's often based on fear you know and stands in its own way because of this or complex reason or reasoning that goes way out of of out of out of the alignment that we have with ourselves you know like where people think oh if i go up if a man goes up if a, like let's say let's take a hunter guy who who doesn't want to pet a dog because yeah his reasoning oh what if the lady thinks i'm gay you know, it's these kind of reasonings that come in that completely detach people from who they really are. But a retarded child, as well as a dog, a horse, or a pig, they will go right up to that other living being. They don't discriminate at all. It's like, it's this, oh, fun, you're a friend. I want to play with you. I want to kiss you. I want to be with you. I want to feel you on my body. You know, it's an, not sexual, it's a friend thing, you know. And this friend connection, most people have detached themselves from that. Somebody who doesn't have the cortical function with all its neurosis going on, doesn't have that. They, they, it will never be there. They will always go straight forward to you and kiss you. That's why a dog will rub themselves on a f stranger who is nice to them. Kenny goes up to every stranger and he looks them in the eye with his light blue eyes and people are mesmerized and it gives them uh, just a moment of connection, connectivity to oh, this is what life is all about, this is what love is all about. He is this being that accepts me 100% whether I have a bad breath or a pimple or a wart on my nose, it doesn't matter, you know, they don't, they don't see anything any problem with it. They don't even notice it. They only see you as this, as the you energy that you really are. And they love you for that energy. And um, so that's where we need to go back to, even with a big, huge Frankenstein cortex. <gasps> yeah, we can use that cortex to understand all these mechanisms. And as teenagers, for teenagers, I tell everybody, you are perfect the way you are. You're perfect. And there's nobody that can tell you otherwise. There's nobody who can tell you that you are whatever, you don't wear the right designer clothes or that it doesn't matter. That's their problem, not yours. We have to understand this. And if, if people tell others to commit suicide, which happens so often on the internet, don't listen to it. Don't, don't listen to these people. Get a different Facebook channel. Invite only kind-hearted people. You no, need to know where to look. You look at the animal rights community. They don't do these type of things. Those are loving people. They would never say something like this to anybody. They are very careful how they word themselves because they don't want to hurt another living being. So words, our words, are so have become so important in our 
in our cortices, you know, the language is now a web has become a weapon, has become a war weapon. You know, we have to be very careful how we word ourselves and we have to be very careful who we listen to, who we associate with. And if somebody says something mean, we just need to not respond, block that person and go to someone nice, someone who's nice to you, you know, someone who does not treat you in any way mean. And so this is, this needs to be practiced over and over and over again. But if we do this, we will, we, we are immune to any of this, you know, nobody can hurt us if we believe in ourselves and if we stick to only kind people when we're dealing with people on the internet. So, take care, bye-bye.